Hello guys and welcome to a new episode in the Spring Boot Security course. Today we are going to talk about token based authentication using uh, JSON Web Tokens or JVT. Before we get started, I would like to remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel in order to stay tuned for more courses that will sharpen your programming skills. Now let's get back to JVT. If you try to give a simple definition, um, a JVT is a compact and safe way to transmit data between two parties. And this information can be trusted because it is digitally signed. Now, I want you guys to remember two things out of this definition. The first way is that um, a JSON web token is a safe way to transmit data between two parties and that the information is digitally uh, signed and thus it can be trusted. So we are no longer talking about uh, forms or HTTP or things like that. It's just a compact way, you know, to verify that a user is who he claims he is. And let's try to look at a bit at the workflow and see how this process works. And we have, let's say we have a client app it can be the application that we're developing, so private, or it can be a completely different application that is trying to access some of the resources that we expose publicly. The first thing that will happen is that the user will try to sign in uh, against an authentication server. And that authentication server can be inside our application, uh, it can be a distinct application that is part of our suite, or it can be a completely different third party like Facebook or Google. The important idea is that the user signs in, either by providing credentials, for example, if we, if our application is also uh, responsible for authentication, or by delegating them to a third party. If the authentication is correct, uh, then the authentication server authentifies the user, creates a JVT token, and then returns that token to the client. The next thing that happens is that after acquiring this token, the client can access resources that uh, our application exposes. And for example, let's assume that the client wants to, uh, to grab all the, re all the uh, reports. So he you know, executes an HTTP request and inside that HTTP request, uh, he needs to add a header, an authorization header, usually with the value bearer space and the token that he received from the authentication server. If that token is uh, valid and correct, then no, the application will respond with uh, 200 OK status code. Uh, if you ask to post something, it's the same thing. We need to include the authorization header, which is again, better space the token. And then if that's correct, um, sorry, if that's correct, uh, the application will respond with 200 OK. And I try to split these concepts up between authentication server and our application. Uh, because sometimes this is the case, but you can also have, you know, these two combined into a single application. You, you can imagine you're creating a Spring Boot application and it exposes some REST endpoints and at the same time it handles uh, authentication. It's perfectly fine to have it this way and it's perfectly fine to split up the um, authentication part from your application. And one thing that you also need to remember is that uh, your application, the uh, endpoints that you exposed need to be, you, you need to have course enabled or cross origin resource sharing because these requests that you see here uh, don't have to originate from a single source. Let me explain this a little better perhaps. Imagine that you have a Spring Boot, you know, MVC app, a classic application with views, with private REST endpoints and so on and so forth you have one single deployable unit. Now you take your application, you build a jar or WAR file, you deploy it, and then that application is self-contained. All the HTTP requests uh, towards your backend originate from the same source because you have one single application. Now, when we are uh, looking at JVT, JVT has been built with something entirely different in mind. You have your backend, so you have your Spring Boot application, that exposes some endpoints, let's say they're REST, and then you have external clients, so other applications hosted on different domains that execute HTTP requests against your resources. 
and because those requests no longer originate from inside your application, from inside your domain, you need to have course enabled in order to allow those requests to be executed. Uh, a typical scenario, for example, is if you build an Angular application that uses a Spring Boot uh, backend. So if you want to do that, I have a great course um, here on YouTube, uh, but that's not the point here. The idea is that when you create Angular applications that work with Spring Boot, you have two applications. You have the backend, the Spring Boot API, and then you also have the Angular client, and they are two distinct applications. In order to send requests from Angular to Spring Boot, you need to have course enabled in the Spring Boot you know, area. Okay, so this is an example just to probably take things to a more concrete level. Okay, so this is how um, uh, authentication works with, uh, with JVT. Let's look a little bit at the JVT structure. So what is this JVT? Because the name stands for JSON Web Token. And, you know, yeah, at, at its very basic, you know, um, it's just a token that is split up into three parts. The first part is the header, which, which is a JSON object. The second part is a payload, which is a JSON object. And the third part is a signature, which is a secret, you know. And so a JSON web token kind of looks like this, you know, like a string split up into three parts by commas. Now, if you look at a real example, um, which I've taken from uh, JVT.io, and it's a really good example. So we have a header, and the header is just a, you know, a JSON object. And the header contains the type of the token, in our case JVT, and the algorithm that we'll use to sign this token. Remember, all GVT tokens are digitally signed. That's why they're trusted. Then in the payload, uh, we can put any information that we find useful. In this case, you know, we have a name of the user, which is John Doe, and then we have some other properties, but you can put here pretty much anything that you want. And then we have, you know, a secret, you know. And how is this token generated? Well, um, basically we encode the header in base64, we encode the payload in base64, and then we append the secret, and then we apply this algorithm to sign our certificate. And the end result is what you see here in the encoded section. It's a string that looks like this. And this is how you're going to see, you know, G uh, JSON web tokens look like. And when you pass them, in order to authenticate yourself, you pass them in an authorization header and they, they are usually prefixed by the word bearer. So you'd have bearer space and this token right here. Now, um, if you want to learn more about GVT because GVT is a complex, you know, subject and it's quite interesting to, you know, uh, take a look at the internals, I can recommend you two resources. The first one is the GVT.io site is pretty pretty good and the second one is an article on medium written by Mikey Stecky Efantis and this article is also does a great job at explaining um, JSON web tokens in a very simple and elegant way so if you want to learn more go check these articles out because they are pretty pretty cool the next question that comes to mind is when should you use uh, this method of authentication and my answer is um, when your application is not self-contained, when resources from outside your application, from outside your domain, um, oh, actually, excuse me, when requests from outside your domain or application will arrive towards your APIs. Now you can imagine that you've written, you know, this cool application, which you know it's an authentication server, it's a REST API. You expose it publicly, and then you create a mobile app for it. You create a web application, maybe using Angular. And, and these are applications that you create yourself, but they need to have the same security mechanism in place. So instead of duplicating it, you are using JVT tokens and they can use JVT uh, for authentication. Uh, besides these applications that you created for yourself, you have third party applications, now applications that you don't control, but that can access your publicly exposed resources for you know, their various purposes. And again, they can use JVT to authenticate against your application. So this is the typical topology of an application that uses JVT um, 
uh, as an authentication mechanism because in this case you know HTTP basic is not secure it's not practical uh, forms authentication again is not practical because you have so many clients and third parties that are trying to access your resources and then JVT is good for this to sum it up JVT is a great compact standard and secure way to exchange information between two parties and it's especially useful for example if you want to build um, applications that use Angular or if you want to expose um, APIs or resources to third party applications or if you just want to centralize um, the backend and the authentication process behind a single application and then have your own multiple mobile web desktop clients you know consume the resources and centralize the authentication process before we close i would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills just go to the romanian coder youtube page and click on the subscribe button also if you found this video useful please hit the like button and share it with your friends if you have any comments thoughts or ideas for new courses just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because I would love to get feedback from you guys. You can also find me on Twitter at Romanian Coder and you can also check out my blog www.romaniancoder.com. Until next time, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye.